war, terrorism, poverty, climate change. There can be many reasons behind a migration flow. We are at the Sturil conferences near Lisbon, where young people are debating a future of hope. Here with us is Antonio Vitorino, Director General of the International Organization for Migration. Welcome to Euronews. My very first question is, uh, we are surrounded here by young uh, people. There's a war going on uh, very near us in Ukraine. How can we uh, prepare uh, younger generations to face and respond to the various migrations that keep happening? The vast majority of migrants worldwide are young people. And the first task, I would say, for young people in the countries of destination is to get in touch with those young migrants. Get to know them, understand why they came, what are their hopes and their expectations. So my appeal here today in the Estoril conferences is to say, get engaged, get in touch, understand why people are fleeing from war, from poverty, from climate change, and then act. And ACT means volunteering in the support, but also advocating a treatment with dignity to migrants. How is your organization coping with the possibility of a long-term war? This uh, refugee crisis is uh, totally unique. First of all, because uh, it has grown enormously in a very short period of time. And unfortunately, I, I'm afraid, this crisis is going to be lasting. So we need to address the immediate needs of those people, both refugees in the European countries and those who have lost everything but nevertheless stayed inside Ukraine, which means shelter, which means water, electricity, food, cash support, and last but not least, prepare for the winter, because the winter is around the corner, but at the same time. If people want to survive, they need to be resilient. And we need to start creating hope for the future, particularly when it comes to the need of reconstructing a country that has been largely devastated by the war. Poland and Hungary were united in a block of countries that refused to follow Brussels' policy on asylum seekers. That seems to have changed after the uh, Russian invasion. Do you think that this conflict, the Ukrainian conflict, may cause a change of views in Central Europe? I hope that uh, the generosity that the civil society has shown will also contaminate governments. In fact, as we have heard today during these conferences, the first respondents were the people, were the citizens who supported the Ukrainians that were fleeing. Official agencies only came after the first positive impact. And I sincerely hope that uh, there is still a reserve of human kind in every country, in every person. This war and the food crisis uh, may worsen the, the humanitarian conditions in many African uh, countries, which um, may lead to an upsurge in uh, migration. What are your main concerns about this? I think that there is a close link between food insecurity, climate change, and forced mobility. And we need to tackle all these components at once, immediately. Food insecurity is not just because of the rise of the price of the cereals because of the war. That's part of the story. But there is another part of the story, which is the terrible impact that climate change, extreme weather events, drought, prolonged drought or sometimes floods, intensive floods, have on agricultural production. And the, the integrated approach requires a mobilization of the international community and a close cooperation, as we do in IOM, with uh, the World Food Programme and uh, with uh, FAO, to tackle the challenge that is not a short-term challenge. It's a long-term challenge to incorporate adaptation and mitigation of climate change in the daily lives of the communities. Uh, precisely climate change. In the future, uh, there are millions of people who can be displaced, who can be forced to leave their homes due precisely to uh, 
climate change? How can we uh, prepare populations to face uh, this kind of exodus? If you look to the Pacific Islands or to the Caribbean, you will see that it is the rise of the water, of the, of the level of the water of the sea that is damaging the livelihoods in those regions. But if you look, for instance, to a country like Sudan, where IOM is very much present, we are dealing with thousands of, tens of thousands of displaced persons because of drought. But in the same country, but in another region, we are dealing with tens of thousands of displaced people because of the floods. So you need to have a tailor-made approach to the realities on the ground. Migration might be part of the solution for the impacts of climate change, but what we need is to prioritize that people want to stay where they live and create the community resilience conditions to stay and to adapt to the impacts of climate change. The Taliban regime uh, has recently celebrated one year in power in Afghanistan. The United Nations says it, this country is experiencing one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. How uh, has that impacted your work? Enormously, as you can imagine, but uh, let's be very frank. The situation in Afghanistan was already a very serious humanitarian situation even before the Taliban took over in 15 of August uh, 2021. So the structural problems in Afghanistan are uh, multifold. You have the drought, you have the instability and insecurity, but you also have a very difficult health situation in the country. And due to the political uh, dimension of this, the situation in Afghanistan, uh, the international community, the UN agencies, among which IOM, we deliver humanitarian assistance. But there are limits for what humanitarian assistance can do. Several things can only be addressed in the long term on the basis of a development strategy. And due to political constraints nowadays, the funding for development actions is limited because of the sanctions, and so we tend to focus, above all, on humanitarian assistance. Antonio Vitorino, thank you very much for joining thank us you. on The Global Conversation.